the Sesame Street Library, featuring the letters A and B and the number one, volume one, with Jim Henson's Muppets. Written by Michael Frith, Jerry Jewell, Emily Pearl Kingsley, Sharon Lerner, Nina B. Link, Albert G. Miller, Jeffrey Moss, Norman Stiles, John Sloan, Daniel Wilcox, illustrated by Mel Crawford, Michael Frith, Joe Mathau, Harry McNaught, Kelly O'Shelley, Kelly O'Ashley, Michael J. Smolin, Carol Spinney, photographs by Charles P. Rowan, with voices and narration by Geeky Jr. and Speaky Geekies, Mr. Geeky. A. In A Story Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom, there lived a queen named Queen Agatha. One day, Queen Agatha called all the knights of the kingdom to the throne room. I love things that begin with A. Knights of the kingdom, announced Queen Agatha. I love things that begin with A. Whoever can bring me something that begins with the letter A will be rewarded handsomely. Perhaps the winner will dance with me at the royal party tonight. Oh boy, said Sir Bird. I'm heading for the royal zoo. That's the only place where I can find something that begins with the letter A. I'll be right back, Queen Agatha. Sir Bird hurried from the throne room, pausing only long enough to take an apple from a bowl near the throne room door. I'd better bring this apple with me, he said, in case I get hungry on my way to the zoo. Once outside the castle, Sir Bird realized that he was lost. Oh no, I'm lost, cried Sir Bird. If only there were something to help me find my way to the royal zoo. Just then, Sir Bird passed a large arrow. The arrow said, this way to the zoo. Oh, look at that arrow, exclaimed Sir Bird. That arrow will help me find my way. So he grabbed the arrow and followed it until he reached his destination, a cage in the royal zoo where there sat a happy-looking alligator. Oh, Mr. Alligator, I found you at last, said Sir Bird. Your name begins with the letter A. Won't you please come with me back to the throne room? Since the alligator had never before seen a throne room, he was more than happy to follow Sir Bird. When he reached the throne room, Sir Bird announced to the queen, Queen Agatha, this alligator's name begins with the letter A. I guess now I can dance with you at the royal party, huh? Well, said the queen, first of all, that apple and that arrow you have also begin with the letter A. Oh, how silly of me said Sir Bird. I grabbed the apple and the arrow without realizing that they began with the letter A. But I guess that since I brought you an apple and an arrow and an alligator, I can dance with you at the royal party for sure. Welcome to the queen's party. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'd like to dance with your friend. You're a pretty handsome guy, you know that, said the queen to the alligator. Then she said to Sir Bird, Sir Bird, since you found the letter A, I will give you a lifetime supply of bird seed, and I will make you my ambassador to Antarctica. Oh boy, said Sir Bird, and Sir Bird was very happy, and so was the queen. As for the alligator, he was happy too, because he had always wanted to dance with the queen, and since everybody is happy, this story is over. Howdy, it is I, the Count. I am riding a wild bucking bronco horsey, but not only can I ride him, I can count him too. One, one horsey. Ah, ah, ah. Cookie Monster's famous cookie dough. Dear reader, hello there. Me cookie monster and my favorite thing is eating cookies. In this wonderful set of books, me going to show you how to make all kinds of cookies. But first, me tell you secret recipe for cookie dough. It's been in my family for years. Here is what you will need a medium-sized mixing bowl, measuring cup, and spoons, and a fork, butter, or margarine, soft but not melted, sugar, two eggs, vanilla, all-purpose flour, baking powder, and salt. What to do to make the dough? One, put three-fourth cup of butter or margarine, that's a stick and a half, into your mixing bowl. Number two, measure one cup of sugar. Number three, pour sugar over butter. Number four, with a fork, squash butter and sugar together until they are blended. Number five, crack shells of two eggs and pour eggs over mixture in bowl. Number six, 
Measure one teaspoon vanilla and pour over mixture. Number seven, with fork, blend everything in the bowl together. Number eight, measure two and a half cups of all-purpose flour and pour over mixture in bowl. Number nine, measure one teaspoon baking powder and sprinkle over flour. Number 10, measure one teaspoon salt and sprinkle over flour and baking powder. Number 11, mix everything together, either with the fork or with your hands. Number 12, put dough in icebox to chill at least one hour. You can make lots of dough at once and keep it in your icebox in a plastic bag. It will last a long time. Then, whenever you make cookies, just take out as much as you need. In the Sesame Street Library, me tell you how to use this yummy dough to make yummy cookies. Love cookie! Bert's bath! Hey, Bert, said Ernie one bright sunny day. Let's go out and play some football. Ernie, I can't go play football, said Bert. Can't you see I'm going to take a bath now? I can't play football. Gee, Bert, said Ernie. You don't have everything you need to take a bath. You need one more thing. Oh, said Bert. I do? Yes, said Ernie. You need one rubber ducky to keep you company. Here it is. Okay, Ernie, Bert said. Thanks a lot. Now I'm going to take my bath. Wait a second, Bert, Ernie said. I forgot you'll need one more thing in your bath. You might get hungry. So here is one sandwich for you to eat. A sandwich, cried Bert. How can I eat a sandwich in the bathtub? You're right, said Ernie. You'll need one more thing. You don't want to get crumbs in the tubby, so you will need one table to eat your sandwich on. Come on, Ernie, groaned Bert. I can't take a bath with all that stuff. Of course you can't, said Ernie. You need one more thing. You need to have some nice music to listen to. You need one piano. Ernie, yelled Bert, this is ridiculous. I can't play the piano while I take a bath. You certainly can't, Ernie said. How silly of me. Just one more thing, and then everything will be ready. There you are, said Ernie. One elephant to play the piano for you. Ernie, shouted Bert. Will you look at this? With your just one more thing and one more thing, you filled up the whole bathtub. And there's no room for me in there. Now I can't take a bath at all. In that case, said Ernie, how about going out to play a little football with me, Hubbard? <laughs> Ernie presents the letter A. Now it's time to study the letter A. One word that begins with A is apple. This is an apple. Do you know what to do with an apple? Bum. You eat it. Ha, 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 ha. Happy, sad, happy, sad, happy story. I have a story for you. It's about being happy and being sad. You can help me with your happy, sad masks. Whenever the people in the story are happy, hold up your happy face mask and shout, Yay! And when the story is sad, show the sad side and say, Hoo -hoo. Okay, are you ready? How to make a happy sad mask at home. Ask a parent or a grown up to get these materials for you. Just take a paper plate or a round piece of cardboard. On one side, draw a happy face. On the other side, draw a sad face. Take a paper towel tube and make a slit in the top. Then slip in your happy sad face, and that's it. Now, are you happy? <laughs> once upon a time, in a little house, Near a little forest, there lived a little girl and a little boy, and they were very happy. Yay! But one day, when the little boy went to the icebox to get something for lunch, all he could find was some liverwurst, and they both hated liverwurst, and that made them very sad. Hoo-hoo! I have an idea, said the little girl. Let's make liverwurst sandwiches and have a picnic. That will be fun! And that idea made them very happy. Yay! So off they went into the forest to have their picnic. But no sooner had they spread out their picnic blanket than a monster jumped out from behind the trees. Liverwurst, he yelled and gobbled up all their sandwiches. This made the children very sad. Hoo hoo! When the monster saw how sad they were, he reached into his pocket and pulled out a bag full of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Here. 
he said. My mommy made me peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch, and me hate peanut butter and jelly. Me was so sad. Hoo hoo. Until me saw your liver worst, but that made me very happy. Yay! When the children saw the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, that made them happy too. Yay! And so, that made everyone happy, except for me, because this is the end of the story, and that makes me sad. Hoo hoo. Here are some of your favorite Muppets doing different jobs around Sesame Street. Here is Harry Monster as a policeman. And here's Big Bird as a mail carrier. I wonder who that bird seed is going to. The Princess and the Cookie. In a castle on a mountain, there was once a friendly king, and he would have been quite happy, but for one annoying thing. What upset him was a problem that disturbed him night and day. It was how to find a husband for his daughter, Princess Kay. I am tiny, said the princess. Very delicate and sweet. I will marry any fellow who can bake my best love treat. Do you know what that is, Daddy? Do you know my favorite thing? Do you know what I'm so hooked on? Sure, it's cookies, said the king. Yes, my greatest treat is cookies, said the princess with a sigh. But they must be small and dainty and as delicate as I. If a man who bakes such cookies came to visit me, said Kay, I would fall in love that minute. I would marry him that day, said the king. A dozen princes have brought cookies here to taste, but the trouble that they went to, it was just a total waste. When you taste their sample of cookies, you've but one rude word to say. Can you tell me what the word is? Sure, it's blech, said Princess Kay. That is right, her dad continued, and it pains my royal neck. When you nibble on a cookie, hold your nose, and holler blech. You are mighty picky, daughter. I cannot believe it's true that those princes' homemade cookies were not good enough for you. Bring a fellow, said the princess, with a cookie in his paw that is tiny and delicious, and you'll have a son-in-law, said her dad. Three handsome princes have arrived from distant lands. They are waiting in the parlor, holding cookies in their hands. In the castle's royal parlor stood a prince in uniform. Here's a cookie, dear, he whispered. Better eat it while it's warm, said the king. Boy, that's so tiny, it's no bigger than a speck. What's the word for this one, daughter? said the royal princess. Blech! Then the prince said, Your bananas! stamped his foot upon the floor, threw the cookie on the table, and went marching out the door. He's bananas, said the princess. That one will not do at all. That cookie is not tiny. I would say it's only small. When the second prince was summoned, in he pranced in shining armor. Take this cookie, babe, he murmured. I just baked it. It's a charmer. That's just your opinion, Charlie, said the princess with a pout. Leave your cookie on the table, and my maid will show you out. When the third prince made his entrance, he was treated just the same, and he left the royal castle just as quickly as he came. Then the king said, Well, daughter dear, you have made your dad a wreck. You will never find a husband, because you're always saying blech. Just about a minute later, from the castle kitchen's wing, there appeared the cookie monster, private baker to the king. In his hand, the baker carried, on a teeny-weeny tray, one delicious-looking cookie, small and delicate as K. Me this cookie, said the monster. Smallest one you'll ever meet. Well, so long, old king and princess. Gonna take outside and eat. Hold that cookie, cried the princess. It's the one I long for. Wow! Let me eat your perfect cookie, and I'll marry you right now. Nothing doing, said the monster. Cookie made for me alone. But, the king said, give it to her, and you'll sit upon a throne. Give that cookie to my daughter, and who knows how far you'll go. You'll no longer be a baker, but a prince with lots of dough. No, 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 exclaimed the monster. But then, looking down, he saw three more cookies that were lying on the table near his paw. Cookies, bellowed Cookie Monster. Great big cookies, son of a gun, cried the king. Then trade them, trade them. Give my K your tiny one. Oh boy, said the cookie monster. It's a deal. I eat these three. Princess K can eat my cookie, but no have to marry me. But you must, the king commanded, hugging him around the neck. Welcome to the family, Baker, said the cookie monster. Blech. Oh my goodness, you are a very big bird. 
cookie monsters shape cookies. Salutations. That means, hi there, me back for delicious page of cookie making. This time, me show you how to make different shaped cookies, okay? This one, pretty tricky. First, take some cookie dough out of icebox. If you all out of cookie dough, oh dear, just make some more. Sprinkle cloth with flour and put dough on cloth. Roll dough out flat, about one fourth inch thick. Now come the tricky part. Need to find things to make shapes with. Let me see. Ah, can use glass or cup to make round cookies. And those box lids make good rectangles and squares. Me just push them down on dough and peel away dough on outside. First me make circles, then me make squares and rectangles. But how me make triangle? Aha, good idea. Me cut square in half like this. Me make two triangles. Now me heat oven to 400 degrees. Put cookies on ungreased cookie sheet and put cookie sheet in oven. Okay, now come hardest part. Me have to wait six to eight minutes while cookies cook. What me going to eat? Furniture all gone. Wait a minute. Did me say page was delicious? Me try. Yum. Pretty good. Eat nice rectangle too. Remember, never use oven without grown up helping you. Remember, more delicious cookies coming in volume two. Nom 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 nom. Me love cookies. Bert and the beanstalk. This is a great story, Ernie. It's full of words that begin with the letter B. You know something, Bert? I'm bored. Once upon a time, there lived a boy named Bert. One day, Bert traded the family bicycle for a bag of magic beans. But Bert's buddy, Ernie, looked in the bag and said, Beans? Blah! How boring! And he threw the boring beans out the back window. Immediately, the beans began to bloom. By breakfast, they had blossomed into a big, beautiful beanstalk. When Ernie saw the beanstalk, he said, Look, a big, beautiful beanstalk! That's really boring! But Bert wasn't a bit bored. I feel brave, Bert bellowed, so he bounded up the beanstalk. Up, up, up went Bert, beyond the bean blossoms, beyond the birds, beyond the blue, until he came to a big black building. The building belonged to a giant named Burly Barney. Burly Barney was in the bedroom eating his breakfast of bushels of buttered buns, barrels of blueberries, and bunches of bananas. When Bert saw how big Burly Barney was, Bert beat it to the back room. There, Bert found a big basket. It was full of bottle caps. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, said Bert. Bottle caps. I collect bottle caps. So Bert brought the basket of bottle caps back to the beanstalk. But Burly Barney saw Bert, and he began to bellow. You took my bottle caps. I'd better beat it, said Bert. Boldly, Bert climbed down. Barney bounded down behind him. But on a bottom branch, Bert slipped and fell with a bump. I'll bet you want to bash me because I borrowed your basket of bottle caps, blurted Bert. Are you batty? bellowed Burly Barney. Those bottle caps are boring. They were driving me bananas. Thank you for borrowing my bottle caps. And Burly Barney shook Bert's hand. In fact, he shook Bert's whole body. Then Barney bounded back up the beanstalk to his beautiful black building. And now the basket of bottle caps belonged to Bert. Bert had the best and biggest bunch of bottle caps on the block. So Bert was beaming, and everyone lived blissfully ever after, except Ernie, who was bored. Oh, brother, that's boring. Ernie and Bert present shape pictures. Ernie, I have the square, the triangle, and the rectangle. All you had to get was the circle. How can we make shape pictures if you don't have the circle? Bloop. Bert and Ernie are proud to present shape pictures. Here are some pictures we made of these shapes. And here are some extra shapes for you to make pictures out of. That triangle might make a nifty pigeon. Bing boom! Can I hit my nose bag now? <laughs> Oscar's worst day. This is a picture of me, Oscar the Grouch. And this is the day I hate most. Everybody is getting ready to clean up Sesame Street. It's awful. They sweep all the nice dirt off the sidewalks. They pick up all the wonderful yucky trash that's lying around. They get rid of all the old tin cans and paper on the street. Then, do you know where they put all that stuff? In the trash cans. You know, some things about cleanup day aren't so bad. 
if you happen to live in a trash can, that is. <laughs> the princess and the pea. One dark and stormy night, a girl knocked at the door of a royal palace. I am a princess, she said. I got lost in the storm and my horse ran away. Will you let me stay the night? A princess indeed, said the queen. The girl's clothes were torn and muddy and her hair was a mess. But when the prince saw the girl's lovely smile, he begged his mother to let her stay. As soon as the queen noticed that the prince was interested in the girl, she decided she must find out if the stranger was a real princess. So she put a pea upon a mattress and piled 12 more mattresses on top. Then she gave the girl a ladder and told her to sleep well. The queen hurried to tell the prince about her plan. If she feels the tiny pea, she's got to be a real princess said the queen. The next morning, the girl came out of her room looking very tired. I couldn't sleep at all, she moaned. There was a lump in my mattress. She is a real princess, gasped the queen. Even if she isn't, I love her anyway, said the prince happily. And when he asked the princess to be his bride, she said yes. Does Ernie draw with his left or right hand? The answer, he draws with a crayon. <laughs> Crafts for all seasons. Spring. Hello, everybody. This is old Farmer Grover here. It is springtime, and spring is the time when all the pretty flowers bloom. I will show you how to make some flowers of your own. Get some paper cups, some straws, some paste, and some paper and crayons. Draw some beautiful flowers on the paper, cut them out, and stick them to the straws. Then put some sand in the cups and stick the straws in the sand. Aren't they beautiful? You can even decorate the cups like I did. Summer. You know what us grouches like to do in the summer? We like to go down to the swamp and play in the mud. Here are some of my favorite mud toys. The best thing to use is a plastic bleach bottle. You can cut off the bottom and use it for a pail. You can cut the top like this and it makes a super duper mud scooper. Of course, if you're not a grouch, you can use them at the beach for sand toys. Blech. Fall! Hi, I'm Betty Lou. When the fall winds blow, I love to make pretty pinwheels and watch them spin. First, take a square piece of paper and color it with bright designs on both sides. Then fold it in half like this. And then again, like this. Now, draw a small circle right in the middle of the paper. Cut on the fold lines toward the middle until you reach the outside of your circle. Be sure you don't cut all the way through the middle. Now, take one corner of each triangle and stick it to your middle circle like this. Stick a piece of cork or the eraser from a pencil on the pins so you won't get pricked. Youch! Last of all, take a pin and straw and stick the pin through the middle of the pinwheel and through the straw. Now you can take your pinwheel out for a spin. Winter. Oh dear, it's getting cold. It must be winter. Do you know what I love about the winter? All the beautiful snowflakes. I'll show you how to make some. All you need is some white paper squares and a pair of scissors. First, fold your paper in half. Then, fold it in half again. And then, fold it one more time into a triangle. Now, snip out bits from each side of the triangle. Be sure to leave some space between each snip. You can make all different kinds of snowflakes to hang on your wall and windows. Isn't that nice? Hey, Bert, this was a great book, wasn't it? It sure was, Ernie. But wait till you see volume two. <laughs> and don't forget to visit Geeky Jr. for more of the stories that you love only on Geeky Jr. and Speaky Geeky. Ask a parent or guardian if you can subscribe to Geeky Jr. today.